Welcome to section 51 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we will be discussing three species within the Rickettsia genus, Rickettsia rickettsii, Rickettsia prowazeki, and Rickettsia typhi, which you can see right here. Our story takes place in the Rocky Mountains. You can see the pretty Rocky Mountains surrounding this little valley, and these Rocky Mountains represent Rocky Mountain spotted fever, which is caused by Rickettsia rickettsii. Now look at this cabin. It's practically destroyed. There must be some strange things happening in these Rocky Mountains. Anyways, this destroyed roof and wall represent the fact that Rickettsia species do not have a cell wall. So absent wall and roof for no cell wall. Now look at this guy who's spray painting this dilapidated cabin. He's putting red spots all over it. These spots are to help you remember this spot in Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. So spots on the cabin in the Rocky Mountains stands for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Now let's talk about the symptoms. The symptoms of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever will be demonstrated by this poor fellow tied up here on the bed. He is pretty sick, as you will soon learn. Right now, just focus on the fact that he is dressed as a big tick. He came to the Rocky Mountains to fight off the fleas using his tick-like abilities. At least that's what he believes. To his credit, there is in fact a monstrous swarm of fleas in the story. We'll just introduce those later. That still doesn't mean that he has tick-like abilities. But anyways, when this crazy tick man saw that he couldn't defeat the fleas, he lost his mind and needed to be strapped down for his own safety. In any case, this man dressed as a tick will help you remember that Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is spread by ticks. So don't get any tick bites while you're in the Rocky Mountains, or you might end up like this guy. If you look closely, you can see that he's strapped to the bed by his wrists and ankles. These straps are causing horrible rashes, and all that wiggling he's doing is probably worsening that chafing. Anyways, the location of these rashes will help you remember that Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever has a rash that starts at the wrists and ankles and then spreads from there. Here is an image of a child with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and you can see this rash covering his entire wrist. And from the wrist, it would spread towards his trunk, up his arm. If you couldn't already tell, this sickly tick guy is pretty delirious. In fact, that's why he was strapped down in the first place. The guy thinks that dressing like a tick will give him superhuman abilities. So obviously he's a bit confused. So anyways, the fact that he looks delirious and confused is to help you remember that Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever often causes confusion. As with many infections, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever causes fevers and sweating. And you can see this guy is obviously sweating. Now here is a religious priest attempting to exercise a demon out of this sick tick guy. I don't blame the priest for thinking the tick guy is possessed. The guy's dressed like a tick and screaming and wiggling like a demon. Anyways, I just want you to focus on this priest's ripped arms. He's been holding this cross for hours and it's wearing down his muscles. The poor guy has to rest his arms by just trying to swap that cross back and forth between his hands. But even that doesn't help his muscles from being completely exhausted. You can see them there, red and bulging. They look super painful. Now these red, weary muscles represent the muscle aches, or myalgias, associated with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Look at that projectile vomiting. It's gross, but it fits well with the whole exorcism idea. Anyways, this represents projectile vomiting that occurs with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Now this woman here is trying to do her part to fight the demon. All she had was her trusty tennis racket, and she's been using it to whack this confused guy all day. Anyways, this racket stands for Rickettsia rickettsii, and Rickettsia rickettsii is the bacteria that causes Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. And don't let this be confusing. Rickettsia is the genus, Rickettsii is the species. There are two other species to know about, neither of which are called Rickettsii. They are called Prowazeki and Typhi. Since these two have different species names, we are not going to use rackets to represent them. So the species Rickettsia rickettsii will be represented with a tennis racket. So this tennis racket represents everything we've discussed so far with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Rickettsia rickettsii. Now let's talk about the next rickettsial species, starting with Rickettsia typhi. You can see that the sign reads, Welcome to Typhoon Country. I guess they get a lot of typhoons in this area. So many typhoons that it warranted a sign. Now this typhoon warning represents Rickettsia typhi, and typhus is actually the name of the disease that Rickettsia typhi causes. But an important point of clarification is that typhus is not the same thing as typhoid fever. Typhoid fever is discussed in the video on Salmonella typhi. So again, typhoon for Rickettsia typhi causing typhus. Let's look closely at that typhoon. It's entirely made of fleas. I guess that's why the sign has been vandalized and now reads flea foon. I guess that vandal we introduced earlier thought this would be funny. I guess it's true though, that typhoon is made completely of fleas. Anyways, all these fleas represent the fact that fleas are what transmit Rickettsia typhi. 
flea attacks are quite the endemic problem for the people here. We will talk about endemic versus epidemic more at the end of this story. For now, just sympathize with this poor victim. Look at him getting eaten up by all those nasty fleas. They are first swarming his belly and caused all those red bite marks. Having completed their meal of his belly, they are now moving on to his arms and legs. This represents the fact that typhus, again caused by rickettsia typhi, starts with a truncal rash that spreads out to the rest of the body. It will spread to the limbs, but it will spare the palms and soles. So again, typhoon of fleas starting at the trunk stands for typhus rash starting at the trunk. Now let's talk about the last rickettsial species, rickettsia prowazeki. Can you see this nasty critter on this boat over here? It's prowling, prowling for prowazeki. By definition, prowling means to move with stealth in order to catch prey. So it's safe to assume this monstrous bug has a victim in its sights. So, prowling for prowazeki. Now, Rickettsia prowazeki is another cause of typhus, so a rash that starts on the trunk and spreads out from there. Now, the owner of this boat likes to host pedicure parties. Now, pedicure sounds like pediculus, as in pediculus species, also known as lice. You can see these boat passengers have gotten off the boat for their promised pedicure. Nothing wrong with getting your nails done. Now, this prowling monster on the boat is a louse, and louse is singular for lice. But the fact that it's on the pedicure boat should remind you that lice is the same as pediculus. Now, pediculus species are discussed in the parasites video, so don't stress out about the details of this parasite now. Just know this, the louse is prowling. So this means that pediculus species, or lice, transmit rickettsia prowazeki. Now we can kind of see into the back of the boat here. These are lice eggs. So this boat will leave this little valley and enter another destination. As it leaves, it carries with it these nasty eggs, which will hatch and release all kinds of prowling lice on a new land. This idea emphasizes the fact that Rickettsia prowazeki causes epidemic typhus. By definition, epidemic means an outbreak or a new infestation. And this is an important point. Rickettsia prowazeki causes epidemic or outbreak typhus. Now contrast this to the local and regular flea foon infestation. This sign reminds us that typhus is endemic to this region, meaning it exists permanently here. So again, the sign indicating that typhoons happen here stands for rickettsia typhi causes endemic typhus, whereas the boat carrying an infestation to a new land represents epidemic typhus. Now let's talk about things that apply to all rickettsia species. First, let's look at this kid here with that cage. He was forced to go on this little pedicure party with his mom. To keep himself from dying of boredom, he caught this giant louse creature and put it in a cage. It appears like he wants to keep it as a pet. He knows he shouldn't have it, so he's trying to cover it up and keep it quiet. This trapped monster represents the fact that rickettsia species are obligate intracellular bacteria, meaning they must stay inside host cells to survive. So again, caged monster for obligate intracellular. Now some people in the area have noticed a unnatural amount of bugs coming from the river. This includes the big pediculus bugs prowling around, as well as the fleas in that flea foon. Anyways, they complained to the city and got a worker over here right away. It looks like the city worker is trying to clean the river by dumping chlorine into it. And that's just too little too late. But anyways, he means well. And this chlorine represents chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol is a treatment for rickettsia species. It can kill rickettsia rickettsi, rickettsia typhi, or rickettsia prowazeki. So again, chlorine for chloramphenicol. Now, for reasons we don't know, this city guy tends to get teased quite a bit. Look at this guy on the dirt bike, whack him on the back of the head. This dirt bike stands for doxycycline. Now, doxycycline tends to be a better first choice for treating rickettsia infections. So you'd choose that over chloramphenicol. And that's because chloramphenicol has a fairly bad side effect profile, and it's used mainly in developing countries. So again, dirt bike for doxycycline. Now let's add this pregnant passenger to the dirt bike. She represents the fact that even if you go for the ideal drug, doxycycline, you still need to be mindful of pregnant individuals. Doxycycline is a tetracycline, which can hurt the fetus. Now some fun things happen on this river when the pedicure party passes by. The party has arranged for this man to come by with his pet whale to give a performance behind the boat. This whale adds to the excitement surrounding pedicure party day. And whale sounds like whale felix test. Now the whale felix test is a way that rickettsia species can be diagnosed. The whale felix test is a very old test that's based on a simple premise. The body will form antibodies against rickettsia species. These same antibodies can cross-react when exposed to proteus antigens. So, to do a whale felix test, take the patient's serum and expose it to proteus antigens. This can be performed by using a slide test or a tube test. On the slide, if the blood, which you can see right here, is exposed to the proteus antigen and then agglutinates rapidly, then that's a positive test. 
In the tube series, blood is added at different serum dilutions. You can see it's less over here and more concentrated over here. And a proteus antigen is placed in each one of the tubes. And if there's agglutination at a lower concentration, that indicates a positive test. Now, the speed at which agglutination occurs, which is relevant for the slide test, or the concentration at which agglutination occurs, relevant to the tube test, is not important to know. So don't get wound up on this. And the reality is that this test is not very sensitive or specific, although it is used worldwide still. And the next test we introduce is the ideal test. Now this guy being attacked by the flea foon was innocently playing games, trying to offer some entertainment to visitors passing with the pedicure party. The poor guy was attacked, as we well know, so we left his games behind. These games stand for Gimza stain, another excellent way to diagnose rickettsia infections. Now Gimza stains are effective for identifying bacteria that must reside in host cells. Remember that caged louse over there? So again, games for Gimza stain. Now that we've covered the items in the image, let's do a question to apply this. A 19-year-old female presents to the physician with a pruritic rash on her abdomen, arms, and legs. She states that the rash started on her abdomen soon after she brought a new dog home from the local pound. The physician recognizes that the rash is likely caused by a rickettsial infection. The physician tells the patient that he sees this type of infection three or four times each year and has for the past 20 years. The physician also indicates that he has never seen this infection prior to moving to this area. Which of the following is true regarding the most likely causal organism? A. It will appear purple on a gram stain. B. It is spread by ticks endemic to the area. C. It is spread by an organism belonging to the pediculosis genus. Or D. A tetracycline should be administered. Now hopefully you notice that this rash started on her trunk and spread outward. She says it started on her abdomen, and now it's on her arms and legs as well. So we're thinking of rickettsia prowazeki or rickettsia typhi either of which cause typhus. And we are also told that we should be thinking of an endemic form of typhus. This clue was given when the physician states that he sees this type of infection three or four times each year and has for the past 20 years. And he's never seen the infection prior to moving to this area. This indicates an endemic problem. So which of these two rickettsial species causes endemic typhus? That would be rickettsia typhi. Recall that welcome sign that reminds people that typhoons occur regularly here in this region which will help you remember endemic typhus. With this in mind, the correct answer is D. A tetracycline should be administered. Now, doxycycline is the type of tetracycline that you're gonna be using. Now, choice A is wrong because this bacteria does not gram stain well, since it's an obligate intracellular organism. That's why you need the whale Felix test or Giemza stains to diagnose this. Now, choice B is wrong because rickettsia typhus or rickettsia typhi is spread by fleas. Remember the flea foon? Ticks, on the other hand, spread rickettsia rickettsii, which causes Rocky Mountain spotted fever, not endemic typhus. Now choice C is wrong because pediculosis species, or lice, spread rickettsia prowazeki. Remember the bug prowling around the pedicure party? Now since it was on the boat traveling away to another area, it was going to cause epidemic or outbreak typhus, not the endemic typhus we're dealing with here. And that should be all you need to know about rickettsia species.